Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N. Y, and the second word is and, spelled A-N-D, and the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first coincidence miracle today is pretty amazing. I hope I can convey it to you uh, verbally. I, I lived and experienced what happened, and I, I know it's an amazing coincidence miracle. So I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, the first thing is I was inspired for about three days, uh, of a similar message for three days, to uh, post something on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, I typically post something every day or every other day. I get inspired with things that uh, God wants me to post there, and I get good feedback. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience for about two, year, two years now. Uh, so I was inspired for about three days. It kept uh, building in my mind and in my heart uh, during my prayer time that this message would be important. So over a three-day period, I kept formulating it. You know, during prayer time, I would get other ideas, or I'd be driving somewhere, and I'd get some more ideas. And as you know, ideas are often, very, very often, God inspiring us and talking to us. We think we're getting ideas, but he's really talking to our souls. Uh, we can tell that if we, you know, analyze what's coming into us um, when it's happening. You know when God is inspiring you after a while. So the message was something along the order of um, when we're born uh, on the planet Earth, uh, long before we are born, uh, there are forces of good and evil already residing here. Uh, and I won't give them names. I'll just talk about there's two forces at the moment, so we don't lose a lot of our listeners if I mention names. But we have forces of good and evil, and after we grow up here on the planet Earth, and I don't know, maybe we spend 16 years here, uh, by then we're pretty sure there are forces of good and evil. So it's all here when we come. And our first day here... The forces of good and evil, they pay attention to us right away. Uh, the forces of good are trying to inspire us with ideas and promptings and nudges and inspirations uh, all throughout the day. Um, good, wholesome, wise, very intelligent and, and wise inspirations that guide us along. And in the process, we learn a lot of things. We might be nudged and prompted how to ride a bike for a couple of weeks and then eventually we learn how to ride the bike, and we know how to do it, and it's, it's part of our innate being and our instincts. Uh, but you see, this force of goodness is training us in tutoring. There's a time when we start to speak words and formulate words and know what they mean 
and we're able to listen and discern words. So the forces of good are working on us, uh, and people give them many labels, and we'll talk about that later. But suffice to focus, I think, focus our attention on the moment that every child born, the first instant they're born, they come into the presence of good and evil. And evil is hiding. You know, it's very, very subtle. Evil doesn't reveal itself. It it looks like it's uh, sometimes a good thing. It acts like a good thing with ulterior motives. And the force of goodness, you know, is obviously there too. So uh, evil, uh, badness... uh, it can be very subtle. But the point is, we, we almost come here like a, a sponge, a dry sponge. And uh, evil and goodness are trying to make us wet by dropping drops of wetness on us. And there's good drops and bad drops. And so we become a good or a bad. Uh, uh, eventually, we become a good or a bad sponge because we're taking in good or bad things. And so that was the message, and I was inspired to elaborate on the fact that uh, our world has stopped teaching our children these facts. Uh, You know, the Bible uh, goes all the way back 7,000 years. The the story of the Bible starts with Adam and Eve, and many people have told us that's 7,000 years ago. So we have 7,000 years of uh, interaction with good and evil that we know about if we read the Bible. And the Bible is pretty clear about we're supposed to teach our children and our children's children, uh, I guess even into the fifth fifth generation, we're supposed to be teaching all of our descendants about the goodness we have learned. So ultimately, we should all become good sponges because we're telling each other, you know, to pay attention to goodness. And therein lies the secret, paying attention to the the inspirations we're getting, the ideas we're getting, all the inputs, the prodding, the nudging that we get during the day, that is goodness tutoring us. Those are tutoring movements. Many people call it the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding us and teaching us all things. And Scripture, uh, Book of John fourteen twenty six, tells us the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Okay, so we've stopped. Uh, we've stopped teaching our young people this, and so our young people think that they are. Uh, becoming intelligent beings and and very wise and crafty in the things they're doing because they think that they're learning all this themselves or they're born with this innate wisdom. And they don't realize that uh, we're all born and and we get these blessings through life that make us what we become. So we have basically the same raw materials. Um, So the point is that goodness and evil is working on us from the moment of our birth because there's a long-term plan. Once we're born, we're going to live forever. So that's that's part of the plan. The question is, when we leave the planet Earth after we die, are we going upstairs or downstairs? That's the question. But anyone who's born is going to live forever, and we hope we're going to live upstairs forever. All right, so that was the message, to stress to everybody that we are these sponges and goodness and evil meets us on the first day of our birth, and goodness and evil are working on us all the time we walk around on the planet Earth. We think we're becoming wise and intelligent, and we don't give any credit to the goodness, and we'll call the goodness God, and we'll call the evil the devil. Um, so we don't give God any credit, and we we try not to give the devil any credit. We we don't think he's ever bothering us, but he's extremely crafty. So that was the message, okay? So we bottom line, we need to keep asking God, asking goodness, what should we do all day long? What should we do about all the things that come up? And that's where we get our wisdom. The wisest man that ever lived, Solomon in the Bible. There'll never be anybody as wise as Solomon, except for Jesus, of course. But the the wisdom Solomon got was because he kept asking God what to do. Now, all the confirmations I got about doing this, remember, I I told you I was inspired to put this on Facebook and LinkedIn. Well, here's what I amassed in confirmations. Um, First, I did post it on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. But uh, one of the first ones was Father Mitch Pacwa on the EWTN uh, television network the night before i posted it i was ready to post it but i knew i was going to post it the next day mitch Packwood gave a homily on the day's scripture readings and he said similar the same thing about teaching our young about good and evil uh, is very very important Uh, and then the next thing i got was an email from someone quoting uh, a protestant minister cal lord wonderful name for a minister lord right Cal Lord, uh, also the night before, 
Um, and he talked about being primed for God, and he was talking about priming some balusters uh, at his house. Um, and then the next thing I got was uh, on I got another email in the morning as I was posting on Facebook from a, a priest, uh, Father Robert Warren, and his article was called The Seventh Seal uh, for Easter of the Year 2021. So I got all of these amazing inputs from people after the fact. And then I went to read the Daily Scriptures in the Word Among Us magazine. I tell you, I often use the Word Among Us magazine. And for the day, April 15th, which was the day I posted, again in the meditations for the day, uh, it's explained by Word Among Us that God is giving us nudges and promptings and ideas all day long. We don't we don't realize he's talking to us because nobody's ever told us that. But that's what all these inputs are getting, all these nudges and inspirations that we're getting uh, from God all day long. Uh, you know, we get an idea in the middle of the afternoon, we, we should stop and think, was that God or not? Or we're driving along and we get a thought, and we should realize that all day long that God is talking to us with inspirations, ideas, and inputs. So what's amazing about this whole story, I hope you, I explained it well enough to you, for three days I'm inspired to post something as I explained, about 7,000 years, and we don't teach our children anymore these important things. We are like sponges that are going to wind up in heaven or hell. Um, and we were doing that in history. We've stopped doing it. So I get inspired. It's very important. For three days, I keep getting the inspiration. So I finally decided, okay, I'm going to do it. I prayed about it. I was convinced. And right after I decided, I got five tremendous confirmations all coming at me at once over a 24-hour period saying the same message in different kinds of words. Okay, so this is how we know that God is talking to us, right? Perfect evidence. You get a thought, and then you get five confirmations that keep saying, it's like it's like somebody tells you something, and then after that you get five drum rolls, and the drum rolls, the way the drums are played, communicate to you with music, the same message. You know? It's like walking through a jungle and hearing different tribes playing their drums off in the distance, but as you're walking by each t each uh, tribe, they're playing the same melody. So that's how you know God is talking to you. And, and it was so beautiful for God to take all this time and trouble to convince me, because this was a hard message to post. I can get a lot of critics, I get a lot of negative input, perhaps, but it, it took a, me being convinced and positive in order to uh, post it uh, on Facebook and LinkedIn. Our next coincidence miracle is showing that God does talk to us all day long. It goes back to a particular day where I was overloaded with a lot of things to do. I didn't think I'd ever get all of these things done today, and I was getting stressed and frustrated. So I prayed about it, and I got inspired. Take a break. Go for a walk. Come on, come on up to the uh, hill that we walk and talk on and walk around the hill for a little while and, uh, you know, get your mind cleared and settled on what to work on. So I took it as an inspiration from God, and I took off and went to the top of this hill. And later that day, I got a text from a very good friend of mine who said, you know, I was driving by that hill, and I was thinking about you, about something you had said to me a while back, several months ago. And I was thinking about that as I was driving by the hill, and I looked up and I saw you walking with your hands behind you as you were in deep meditation. So I didn't come by and bother you, but I did say a prayer for you today. And I thought it was pretty coincidental that I saw you while I was thinking about you, so I thought you would appreciate knowing that. Well, I certainly did appreciate knowing that because it was an excellent confirmation. I got inspired by Jesus to go to this hill, and then I get a text message that tells me someone else got inspired to be thinking about something I said as they, I, they were going by and they saw me. So that's a tremendous confirmation that God had spoken to both of us, and I was delighted. Okay, God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.